I'm actually going to do some swatches of the new 20.5 shade. And when I initially got this product a year ago, I did a bunch of series of shades and I'll put them above and then below. And I had swatched the medium set, I think one or I can't remember. Um, basically it was the shades before this one, 19, 20 and 21. So I had, um, at that time, the previous card has, uh, I think 16, 17, 18 and 19. And I did a review of swatching those on my face. And to give you context, it is a very little light today. I'm here in the Northwest and it's, it's a very cloudy day. So I do sit in front of natural window as much as possible. But on this side, I do have studio light or ring light just to give you context. Uh, I try to check uh, as much as real as possible if it's reflecting the color that I actually am when I'm doing my videos. So this is pretty close to my actual skin tone. I'm actually a little a, a hair deeper and that's sometimes hard to match on days where uh, I'm not controlling the lighting. So it is what it is, but just to give you context. And I also put my closest foundation shades below. So you might want to check that out and expand the description box below. This card medium set one and it has the colors 19, 20, 20.5, 20 and then 21. And I initially got the shade 17, and this is great for my winter color. I did find that this, as I, it got deeper in the summer, this was a bit too light. So 17, I believe, is golden warm olive undertone, and then 20.5 is also an olive undertone but it's in between 19 and 20. So that's why it's 20.5, let me show you. Okay, so this is 20.5 here, this is 19, and this is 20. So you can see, at least for me, that I, what I can tell is that it might look like it, but this might be too red for me. This might be okay, and this might be too, 19 was okay. I actually, when I did a lot of tests of these last year, a lot of you said between 17 and 19, you couldn't tell the difference. 19 was a hair deeper, so I can actually get away with wearing 19. And times like this, I think 19 will actually be a nice color for me. Where 17, it's hard to tell, but it's a little bit too late. So this is what 17 looks like. And just for context, the back side of my arm is always deeper because that is the side that gets hit by the sun. So I have a tan from vacation I just went on about a month and a half ago. So, but again, that's 17, great for winter, but right now it's too pale. I can get away with using it, but I just have to bronze up my face. Okay, so that's 17. This is 19. You can see it's less yellow for sure. This is 20.5. That's nice. It is a bit more yellow, but we'll see. Actually, this is why swatching is good. This is what I remember. Okay, so 20.5 is definitely deeper. This is 20, which is, you can see it's more peach. I don't want to move these around too much. 17, 19, 20.5, this is 20, and this is 21. And this is definitely, 17 is more a golden olive. And you can see, I'm gonna show it up to my face. You can see I could probably get away with a lot of different ones of these. It's so hard to tell because I, this is when you're a person of color, or at least in my particular case, I just know that I could wear probably at least two different foundation shades on my face at one time. Uh, and and what's a little tricky with matching for my face is that I have redness. So sometimes it's really hard to see. So this is 17. 17. Nineteen. This is 20.5. Yeah, 
yeah, you can see it's much more cooler, yet less yellow than the 17. And then going into 21, which is this one. And you can see as it's drying down, it's getting, it's getting to its true color. I wouldn't say these are oxidizing, they're just drying down. Okay, this is 21. So here's what my face is looking like. And then it almost looks like this one maybe could work, but it's more red than this. This is more yellow. This is more red. Do I want to go more, at this point it's like, do I want to go more yellow or not more yellow or red with my undertone or this? This is what I remember is that this is closest, but it almost dulls my complexion. So I'm taking the new shade 20.5. And we'll see, I think it might be a smidge too dark, but we'll try it. And so what I'll do is actually show it for maybe half my face and then we'll see. Okay, that is 20.5. I'm getting a little close so you can see. So this is the side with the foundation and then without. And then I purposely wore a v-neck so you could see. And then no foundation, no foundation, foundation. And the only thing I have is my previous skincare I put on this morning. It's in the afternoon and I put on the Sisley Double Tensor Primer. I think it looks pretty good. And those of you who are new to the Lisa Eldridge, uh, the Seamless Skin Foundation, it also is designed to be self-setting. So I don't have to put powder on here. And what I have found with this wonderful formula is actually around the 10 or 20 mark, it starts to set and really sink into the skin and actually just, it's just really beautiful at that point. Again, it's this 20.5 here. And if I think if I did this one, 19, it might be too sallow. I mean, I could do half and half and we could see, and you can see this one is almost a little bit too, but they say that's red. This is more yellow and this is more red. And I don't know if I want to be more red. I actually think this is a really nice shade for me. It doesn't um, fade me out, which is like, I really appreciate that. Well, what I'm going to do is actually just finish up the rest of my face with 20.5 and just commit. Okay, so that is one pass at 20.5. And sometimes it's helpful to compare to the neck. I did bring some of the foundation down to um, connect it. I also have some acne going on. So I just, I will do that sometimes where I have makeup um, on. I just want to cover my, my acne and acne scarring. Tell me what you think. In real life, I do think it's a little bit too, too orange. So I think what I would do actually, and I'm going to do it now, I'm actually going to take some of this 19 and see if it in the center of my face, just to balance out some of that redness. And I'm really not surprised I'm having to do this. I took a, um, a free class from Danessa Myricks and she was talking about often with people of color and foundation, you have to look at their skin in natural lighting and find the two or three different tones on their face. And so that's what her line is designed to be that you actually take two to three different tones of her, of her foundation and, and use it on the parts that 
correspond to the light and the deepness and the depth. And I watched her use, I think she had two or three different beauties on where she did makeup. She was really showing that she used about two or three different foundation shades all over their face, depending on naturally how they're naturally how their um the le the deepening deep parts and the light parts were hitting on the face and it looked so natural i mean she's a makeup artist that's why she's so great at what she does okay so do you see how that just lightened up my face at least in the middle but i didn't want to lose the depth on the outside and that's something i've known for at least for me for makeup you know in my 20s and almost early 30s i didn't use a lot of foundation because at that time in the industry there wasn't a lot of great choices with makeup and found oh specifically foundation and i was like i don't even want to use foundation because i would just it would never be the right foundation often it was like two oompa loompa orange the ones that i had and the only uh, companies at that time that really catered more to people of color and depth of tone and and um, undertones were uh, mac for sure mac cosmetics um and then i found and then i started using shiseido because it is an asian brand from japan and so they know uh the undertones of yellow and some people with on kind of olivey yellow undertones so i think that looks pretty good i'm not mad about it i do think it's a little bit it's a little bit deeper for me, but that's not that's not bad. I think for here, you can see where I'm having more of this is where I'm lighter, I'm losing my tan, but that's not a bad thing. I think 20.5 is going to be really great when I get deeper in the summer. So if you're looking for the right foundation, and you know that you're deeper than me of the foundation shades I listed below, you might want to check out 20.5 if you have kind of a more olive undertone. And I definitely have it all over my face, but then I put some uh, 19 in the center just to even it up because it was looking a little bit too, a little too warm and orange for me. And that's what you kind of do. You, I For me, well, I speak for myself, I often have to mix foundation colors so you know you'll know if it's if some foundations will help be more of a spot on match with me where i can counteract the loss of depth of my face with bronzer and contour and that's fine so i can know i know chanel i can do that with the clay de peau uh it's too yellow and then i had to get a warmer one so i actually mix those two and then i have the suku foundation 35 and 40 and I use both of those foundations, uh, the deeper one on the outside and then the lighter one on the middle, just because it gets too, it's, it, I lose the depth of, of what's going on in my face. It'll either be too flat light or too flat deep. And then I don't have the dynamics and shadows on my face anymore. I hope that's making sense what I'm saying. Okay. So do you see how that's nice? It's like, I'm adding some much more dynamic and like shadows. I'm going back into 20.5. And the reason I care so much about my base is that if my base is good, the rest of my makeup usually just falls in line and being really beautiful. Okay, so I hope that helped. I used mostly 20.5, uh, a little bit of 19 in the middle. 17 was too light. So really 20.5 for the depth of my face and then 19 just for the front and the center for contrast and brightening. So I'll get up closer so you can see. And I hope that was helpful.